Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Aditi Lumba with the evening news. The headlines. Russia launches special military operation on Ukraine's eastern Donbas region. NATO allies in coordination with EU and other partners impose severe economic sanctions on Russia. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chairs cabinet committee on security meeting on Ukraine situation. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar discusses Ukraine situation with high representative of European Union for foreign affairs and security policy. Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murli Dharan says India is working on alternative measures to bring home Indians stranded in Ukraine. Stock markets around the world tumble as Russia attacks Ukraine. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi scheme proves to be a big support for small and marginal farmers. Moody's Investor Service raises India's growth forecast to 9.5% from 7% for the year 2022. Campaign reaches a crescendo on penultimate day of electioneering for fifth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Government launches Ombudsperson app for smooth functioning of Manrega scheme. Ministry of Culture to organize a two-day international conference on Indian temple architecture at Hampi in Karnataka from tomorrow. And in cricket, India take on Sri Lanka in first T20 of three match series in Lucknow. With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and get fully vaccinated and also help others, including children between 15 and 18 years, to get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain the ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. Another news in detail. Russia launched a special military operation in Ukraine's eastern Donbass region this morning. Russian forces entered Ukrainian territory from Crimea. Ballistic missile attacks were also launched on a number of Ukrainian cities. In a televised address, Russian President Vladimir Putin has urged Ukrainian soldiers who are facing off Russian-backed rebels to lay down weapons and return to their homes. However, Mr. Putin said Russia did not plan to occupy Ukraine but warned that Moscow's response would be instant if anyone tries to take on Russia. Meanwhile, Ukraine said Putin had launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba said Ukraine will defend itself and will win. U.S. President Joe Biden said Washington and its allies would respond in a united and decisive way to an unprovoked and unjustified attack by Russian military forces on Ukraine. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar today discussed the Ukraine situation with High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josep Borrell Fonteles. They also discussed how India could contribute to de-escalation efforts. Dr. Jayshankar also held a telephonic discussion with UK Foreign Secretary Liz Truss today. They exchanged perspectives on the Ukrainian situation. The External Affairs Ministry has set up a control room in New Delhi in view of the prevailing situation in Ukraine. The control room will provide information and assistance. The contact details of the control room are 18001187972 toll free. And these three numbers to get any assistance plus 91112301213 plus 91112301404 and plus 91112301 People can also email at situationroom at mea.gov.in. In addition, the Embassy of India and Ukraine has set up a 24 hour emergency helpline which can be accessed by dialing plus 3809730428 and plus 3809730483. The Tamil Nadu government has also created a separate help desk for those from the state living in Ukraine. The Commissioner Rate of Rehabilitation and Welfare of Non-Resident Tamils has appealed to contact through www.nrthamils.com tn.gov.in for any help. 
queries will be addressed at the phone numbers 044-285-15-288-9600-23645 and 9940256444. Air India Flight AI-1947, which was flying to Ukraine to bring Indian people home, has returned to Delhi due to the closure of Ukrainian airspace. India has called for an immediate de-escalation of tensions between Russia and Ukraine. India's permanent representative to the UN, T.S. Tirumurthy, cautioned that the situation is in danger of spiraling into a major crisis. Meanwhile, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres made a direct appeal to President Putin to stop Russian troops from attacking Ukraine. Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murli Dharan said, The Union government is working on alternative measures on a war footing to bring home Indians stranded in Ukraine after that country closed its airspace amid Russia's military action. Speaking to media persons in Thrissur, he said that 18,000 students are among the Indians stranded in the war-ravaged country and top priority is being accorded to ensure their safety. He urged students in Ukraine and their parents back home not to panic. The minister said the government has also decided to send more diplomatic officials to help the Indian embassy in Kiev. Indian Embassy in Kiev organized safe premises for the large number of Indian students in Ukraine who turned up outside the embassy this morning. Sources said not all could be accommodated inside the embassy premises. This process took some time given the ground situation in Kiev. Sources also said that no Indian national is currently stranded outside the embassy. As fresh students arrive, they are being moved to the safe premises. NATO has said that it stands in solidarity with Ukraine. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said in a televised statement that NATO allies, in close coordination with the EU and other partners all over the world, are imposing severe economic sanctions on Russia. In response to Russia's massive military build-up, we have already strengthened our collective defense on land, at sea, and in the air. In the last weeks, Allies from North America and Europe have deployed thousands or more troops to the eastern part of the lines and placed more on standby. We have over 100 jets at high alert protecting our airspace and more than 120 Allied ships at sea from the high north to the Mediterranean. All this shows that our collective defense commitment, Article 5, is ironclad. We will continue to do whatever is necessary to shield the lines from aggression. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said he spoke to Ukrainian President Zelensky to offer support. In a televised statement on Ukraine, Johnson said their worst fears have come true. He said Russia has unleashed war in Europe and attacked a friendly country without any provocation or credible excuse. President Putin of Russia has unleashed war in our European continent. He's attacked a friendly country without any provocation and without any credible excuse. Innumerable missiles and bombs have been raining down on an entirely innocent population. A vast invasion is underway by land, by sea and by air. And this is not in the infamous phrase, some faraway country of which we know little. Turkey has also expressed solidarity with Ukraine, saying it will continue to support its territorial integrity. European Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen said in a televised address, President Putin is responsible for bringing war back to Europe and the EU would impose new sanctions on Russia. Iran, on the other hand, said the war in Ukraine is caused by NATO's provocative actions. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired a Cabinet Committee on Security meeting this evening. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, Home Minister Amit Shah, External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar and NSA Jajit Tobal were among those who were present in the meeting. The meeting came on a day when Russia launched special military operation on Ukraine's eastern Donbass region. Later tonight, Foreign Secretary Harshvardhan Shringla will brief media on the Ukraine situation. The stock, bond and commodity markets around the world have been rattled after Russia declared war on Ukraine, sending stocks tumbling and crude oil prices surging. A report from the business world. 
The Indian stock market today saw the biggest fall in two years. Benchmark indices declined for the seventh consecutive trading session as tensions between Russia and Ukraine escalated. The barometer index, the S&P, Sensex tumbled 2,702 points at 54,530. The Nifty 50 index slumped 815 points at 16,248. And in the international market, Brent crude futures breached $100 a barrel for the first time since 2014. Rajesh Lake for AIR News. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said, agricultural budget has increased manifold only in last six years. Addressing a webinar on the positive impact of Union Budget 2022-23 on the theme Smart Agriculture, he said, Sir, budget ढाई गुना की बढ़ोतरी की गई है कोरोना के मुश्किल काल में भी स्पेशल ड्राइव चलाकर हमने तीन करोड़ छोटे किसानों को केसीसी की सुविधा से जोड़ा है इस सुविधा का विस्तार एनिमल हस्बेंड्री पशुपालन और फिशरीज से जुड़े किसानों के लिए भी किया गया है टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रधानमंत्री किसान सम्मान निधि PM Kisan scheme, which was launched three years ago, Prime Minister said that this scheme was proved to be a big support for the small and marginal farmers of the country. दिए जा चुके हैं इस योजना में भी हम स्मार्टनेस का अनुभव कर सकते हैं सिर्फ एक क्लिक पर 10 12 करोड़ किसानों के बैंक खातों में सीधे पैसे ट्रांसफर होना ये अपने आप में किसी भी भारतीय को किसी भी हिंदुस्तानी को गर्व करने वाली बात है American Credit Rating Agency, Moody's Investor Service, has raised India's growth forecast to 9.5% from 7% for the calendar year 2022. The agency today revised its growth projection for India, citing a stronger-than-expected economic recovery from the national lockdown of 2020 and the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic in mid-2021. Moody said in a statement that they have raised the 2022 calendar year growth forecast for India and maintained the forecast for 5.5% growth in 2023. This translates into 8.4% growth in fiscal year 2022-23 and 6.5% growth in fiscal year 2023-24. In poll-bound Uttar Pradesh, the high-pitch electoral campaign reached a peak on the penultimate day of electioneering for the fifth of seven-phase assembly elections. The poll campaign for the subsequent phases in UP and two-phase polling in Manipur is going on in full swing. The fifth phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh will be conducted on the 27th of February in 61 assembly constituencies, including nine reserved for the scheduled cast from 12 districts in Manipur. The first phase of assembly polls will be held on the 28th of February. The electoral battle scenario in the fifth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh indicates that there are total 692 candidates in the fray for 61 assembly seats. Earlier, over 61% voter turnout was registered during the fourth phase of polling yesterday in 59 assembly constituencies from nine districts of Uttar Pradesh. With this, the political fate of 624 candidates was sealed in the electronic voting machines. In Manipur, with first phase of assembly polls nearing, all arrangements for dispersal of polling parties have been made in right earnest. Addressing media briefing at its office four days before the first phase of polls, Rajesh Agrawal, Chief Electoral Officer, CEO, said all polling stations will be sanitized one day before the poll to ensure safe voting for electors. With the general election to the Manipur Legislative Assembly 2022, the silence period for the first phase of poll starts at 4 p.m. on 26th of February 2022. During the silence period, presence of political functionaries from outside the constituency will be restricted. Election matters shall not be telecasted, public broadcasted in radio, TV or similar apparatus. 
नो पॉलिटिकल एडवर्टीजमेंट कैन बी पब्लिस्ड विदाउट अ प्री सर्टिफिकेशन बाय द स्टेट लेवल कमिटी और द डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल कमिटी in Manipur ahead of the first phase of polls chief minister Northam Bam Birin Singh told the people to go for ethical voting the chief minister was campaigning for BJP candidate at Awankhem constituency in Thaubal district today listing the achievements of BJP led government in the state he said the BJP led government has brought peace and stability in the state you're listening to the evening news on all india radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on Russia launches special military operation on Ukraine's eastern Donbas region. NATO allies in coordination with EU and other partners impose severe economic sanctions on Russia. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chairs cabinet committee on security meeting on Ukraine situation. External affairs minister Dr S J Shankar discusses Ukraine situation with high representative of the European Union for foreign affairs and security policy. Minister of State for External Affairs V Murli Dharan says India is working on alternative measures to bring home Indians stranded in Ukraine. Stock markets around the world tumble as Russia attacks Ukraine. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi scheme proves to be a big support for small and marginal farmers. Modi's investor service raises India's growth forecast to 9.5% from 7% for the year 2022. Campaign reaches crescendo on penultimate day of electioneering for fifth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh government launches ombuds person app for smooth functioning of mandrega scheme ministry of culture to organize a two day international conference on indian temple architecture at hampi in karnataka from tomorrow and in cricket india take on sri lanka in first t20 of three match series in lucknow for quick news updates from the clock फॉलो सोना ट्विटर हैंडल एट ए आई आर न्यूज अलर्ट अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो आरोप आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो वेलकम बैक टू द इवनिंग न्यूज Rural Development and Panchayati Raj Minister Giriraj Singh today launched Ombuds Person app for Manrega. This app will facilitate hassle-free reporting, categorization of grievances and disposal of complaints by Ombuds person. The app will also ensure tracking and timely passing of awards by Ombuds person. Appreciating the initiative Mr Singh said this app will ensure transparency and accountability in the ecosystem of Manrega. The Defence Ministry has signed an MOU to onboard pension services under the System for Pension Administration Raksha Sparsh initiative across over 4 lakh common service centers. The MOU will provide last mile connectivity to pensioners especially those who reside in remote areas of the country. The acquisition wing of the Defence Ministry today signed a contract for 1075 crore rupees with Bharat Electronics Limited for the retro modification of Commander site or Battle Tanks T90. The retro modification will be carried out in 957 T90 tanks of the Indian Army. This will provide a further boost to the Make in India initiative of the government in the defence sector. Chemicals and Fertilizers Minister Dr Mansukh Mandavia will inaugurate a seminar Industry Connect 2022 Industry and Academia Synergy tomorrow in New Delhi The Department of Chemicals and Petrochemicals in Association with Central Institute of Petrochemicals Engineering and Technology and Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry is organizing the seminar During the seminar two technical sessions will be organized on various issues The Labour and Employment Ministry has said the country's economy is on the way to pre-COVID levels according to indicators. The ministry also said the Indian economy is on the path of achieving the Prime Minister's vision of a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2024-25. Budget 2022-23 has further provided a strong impetus for growth with capital expenditure being stepped up to 7 lakh 50000 crore rupees from 5 lakh 54000 crore rupees in the current financial year it said 
The ministry said an analysis of the Employees Provident Fund organization data suggests significant acceleration in formalization of the job market during 2021. Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution Minister Piyush Goel today said bringing back the glory of millets will make the country Atmanirbhar in the areas of food, nutrition and economy. Addressing a webinar on smart agriculture, bringing back glory of millets, moving towards Atmanirbhata in edible oil, the minister said India is going back to its roots like yoga with emphasis on millets. The Central Goods and Services Tax. CGST Commissioner Rate, Delhi has unearthed fake invoicing racket of 611 crore rupees involving tax evasion of over 38 crore rupees. The Finance Ministry said the officers of Delhi South CGST Commissioner Rate came to know about certain bogus firms created solely for the purpose of generating fake invoices. India's COVID vaccination coverage has crossed 176 crore 76 lakh today. More than 28 lakh vaccine doses were administered today. More than 1 crore 97 lakh precaution doses have been administered to the identified categories of beneficiaries like healthcare workers, frontline workers and people over 60 years of age. India's active caseload currently stands at 1,48,359. The recovery rate is currently at 98.46%. In our bilingual live phone-in program, Corona Jagrupta series, Dr. Archana Kumari of All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, will be with us today to answer queries related to coronavirus. Listeners can ask questions to the expert from 9.30 p.m. on telephone number 11 2342 You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag AskAIR. President Ramnath Kovind will undertake a three-day visit to Assam tomorrow. He will inaugurate the year-long celebration to mark the 400th birth anniversary of the great Ahom General Lachit Borpokon in Guwahati. The Ministry of External Affairs inaugurated projects reflecting Buddhist linkages with ASEAN and East Asian countries yesterday as part of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav celebrations. The celebration was graced by Minister of State for External Affairs, Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh. The dignitaries unveiled books of Jataka tales translated into Thai, Korean, Vietnamese and Chinese languages. The Archaeological Survey of India of Ministry of Culture is organizing a two-day international conference, Devyatnam, an Odyssey of Indian Temple Architecture at Hampi in Karnataka tomorrow. Culture Minister G. Kishan Reddy will inaugurate the conference. In Gujarat, Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel today inaugurated the 12th edition of the statewide Garib Kalyan Mela from Dahod. The purpose of the Mela is to provide direct benefits of various government schemes to the poor. The three-day campaign will be held in 33 districts, four metros across the state. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव आजादी का सफर विद एआईआर न्यूज़ बर्थ ऑफ अ नेशन इंडिया's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed एआईआर न्यूज ब्रिंग्स यू अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द स्ट्रगल एवरी डे इंग्लैंड is so powerful its army and its navy all its modern weapons but when a great power like that strikes defenseless people it shows its brutality on the 24th of february 1919 mahatma gandhi initiated the campaign against rawlat acts and set up satyagraha sabha at bombay the movement was against the exclusion of freedom of press and detention without trial. During this agitation, Gandhiji famously said, It is my firm belief that we shall obtain salvation only through suffering and not by reforms dropping on us from the English. They use brood, we soul force. The Rowlatt Acts allowed political cases to be tried without juries and permitted internment of suspects without trial, 
suspending the right of habeas corpus. Freedom fighters rose up against this brutal act and the country witnessed a remarkable political awakening during the months of March and April of 1919. There were hartals, strikes, processions and demonstrations. In Amritsar, the local leaders Kichlu and Satyapal were deported on the 9th of April. The arrest of the local leaders led to attacks on the symbols of British authority. On the 11th of April, martial law was clamped with General Dyer's in command. After the incident of Jallianwala Bag massacre on the 13th of April 1919, the country rose up together in non-cooperation movement. In March 1922, accepting the report of the Repressive Laws Committee, the British colonial government repealed the Rowlatt Act, the Press Act, and 22 other laws. We remember freedom fighter Nenu Ram, who was born on the 24th of February 1892 in District Mandsaur, Madhya Pradesh. Nenu became the president of Haroti Rajasthan Seva Sangh Kota during 1920 and 1926, and mobilized the peasants of Barad and Bundi's Dabi for the abolition of forced labor and redressal of agrarian grievances. He was arrested in 1922. From 1926 to 1936, Nenu Ram served as the president of Haroti Rajya Praja Mandal in Kota. He also worked as an executive member of the Kota Rajya Praja Mandal from 1934 to 1936 and was elected president of its fourth session at Mangrol in May 1939. A liberal and secular leader, Nenu Ram advocated for responsible government in the Kota state. He was murdered under mysterious circumstances while traveling from Ramganj Mandi to his village Nimana on 14th of October 1941 we salute the great indian we also remember freedom fighter bondoka bhotra who died on the 24th of february 1943 Bhotra participated in the Quit India movement in 1942 in Odisha in response to the nationwide call of Mahatma Gandhi. He was arrested and detained in Nabrangpur jail where he fell ill due to the unhygienic living conditions and lack of medical care. On the 15th of February 1943 he was admitted to the hospital and later shifted to Koraput district jail. Bondoka Bhotra died due to heart failure on the 24th of February 1943 while in prison. We salute. This to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. India has set a target of 200 runs before Sri Lanka in the first T20 international of the three match series between played at Lucknow. In reply, Sri Lanka was 6 for 1 in one over when reports last came in. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Russia launches special military operation on Ukraine's eastern Donbas region. NATO allies, in coordination with EU and other partners, impose severe economic sanctions on Russia. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chairs cabinet committee on security meeting on Ukraine situation. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar discusses Ukraine situation with High Representative of European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy. Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murli Dharan says India is working on alternate measures to bring home Indians stranded in Ukraine. 
Stock markets around the world tumbled as Russia attacks Ukraine. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi scheme proves to be a big support for small and marginal farmers. Moody's Investor Service raises India's growth forecast to 9.5% from 7% for the year 2022. Campaign reaches a crescendo on penultimate day of electioneering for fifth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Government launches Ombudsperson app for smooth functioning of Mandrega scheme. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.